Afternoon guys, my name is Julian Davis. I am the e-learning manager for um, Australian College of Training and Employment, which is based out of Brisbane. Um, before I get started, I'm going to show off some technology. Um, I've got a thing around my neck which is connected to a swivel down here. I don't know if any, has anyone heard of a swivel before? Oh, this is great. I'm going to ask Scott to come up. And just because I don't have a big enough tripod, but I only got this last week, so this is the first time I've used it. Um, so I really hope it works. But he's going to pick it up, and hopefully it's going to start to follow me around the room. If the infrared... OK, there we go. I've got a little marker that's sitting on... Um, and I also get to get you all in my video as well. A little marker that controls and reads it and will follow me 360 degrees around the room. So there's no, no stopping it, like there's no azimuth that's going to stop it. It's just going to go all the way around the room, like Dr. Phil or something, just walking around like this. Um, and it's great, and I can see so many benefits of this um, in classroom activities, and it should tilt down as well, but I might not have auto tilt on. Cool. Thanks, Scott. <laughs> no, you can look at it now. You can look at yourself now. There we go. All right, so now it's come back and it's picked me up again. So it's pretty cool and you can get multiple markers for it as well, have multiple people, which is very cool. Okay, what I wanted to talk about was a plugin that we developed um, for our Moodle. We have approximately 13,000 students um, and the majority of those are distant students. Um, what we've done... Um, the big problem that we had, and now I'm going to talk about the tutors. So we have tutors across multiple disciplines and mainly diploma. Um, we're in the vocational sector. And so we've got tutors that have come straight out of industry and they've just got their certificate for. They're not really teachers. Some of them might not be technical savvy. How do they know what their students are doing online and within Moodle? So. Should have a, a tick. Will this work? All right. So 66, a little bit over 66. When I did this, it was 66, um, and that's just a graphical representation of people. Um, so we looked at a product called Peewick. Has anyone heard of Peewick before? Yeah. It's it's like Google, um, but it's not. So it's um, it's a lot. Safer, in my opinion. I know that Elizabeth talked about Google before. Um, it captures almost the same type of information. However, we can pass custom variables. And one of the custom variables we pass is the student's user ID. That now links all the data for that student that we can pull back from Peewick and display it to the tutor in a way that they're going to understand it. Because you've got to think, we're talking about people and no offence to anyone who's in community services, but they're our lowest common denominator because they're very touchy-feely and they probably don't know a lot about graphs. So we want to present it in such an easy way that they're going to be able to understand it and re-engage. So the type of data that we, can, that we collect, and some of this is not quite learning analytics as what um, Elizabeth was talking about yesterday. We look at their last access, the device and browser that they're using. Now, this is not really learning analytics, but when you start thinking about people, particularly in the technical faculties, where something's not working, or they have to do browser testing, this is a very good way for the, for the tutor to understand what browser they're using, uh, what pages they've looked at. The active days is a calculation that we do. So we actually identify which is the most active day that the student's online. From that, we can actually target the learning for that particular day. Um, and how many downloads. When I talk about downloads, I'm talking about resources. So we have all our PDF resources, etc. So what good is this data? We can now start to understand what the student is doing. Okay? Um, it's not really Big Brother. I don't think it's Big Brother. We just need to know what the student's doing. It'll improve the student engagement because the tutor will start to understand how the student is behaving in Moodle. So you can actually start to customise the learning and customise the, um, the help and the resources they can give to that student. Um, and browser being used as well and what resources they've accessed. So this is what we developed. Um, 
I've got one developer, I manage a team of about 10. One of those is a Moodle developer, he's been very busy. We've made it a local plugin, so it's upgrade safe. Okay, that was something that we learnt when we upgraded from 2.5 to 2.7. Um, we are going to 3.1, I've run a quick check, and all of the plugins that my team have built work. I'm not talking about my IT department. Um, you have the ability to search for a student, so based on um, your particular role, so whether you're an administrator or what we call branch managers, you can actually search for any student based on their unique student ID that we have in our student record system. It's very rich client, so it's, it's all Ajax driven. Um, open source, we cache the data. The reason we cache the data is because if you think about the amount of information that, that goes through into an analytical server, we pull it back and we store it in the database for 24 hours. So the data is 24 hours behind. That won't actually affect any of the learning outcomes. This is a very, very big picture of how we actually do it. Um, the tutor can log in. Students can't see any of this. Once the, once the tutor logs in, they'll get a list of all their students that they can click on and go through. Um, I can't do a live demo. My first time I submitted this, this presentation was 1.3 meg because I went, yeah, I'll do, the, I'll do a demo, that'll be fine. And then I read the guidelines and it said, no, you actually have to do screen dumps. So it went up to 135 meg with, with video, so hopefully this will work. See, demo-ish. Okay, so I'm gonna play automatically. Play automatically. I'm Mac. So, what, do you, what were you hoping would happen there? Just play. If you click, does that play? You'll know in a minute because it'll change. There we go. Okay. So, this is our Moodle instance. Our Moodle instance is called My Study Desk. Okay. Um, you can access your student. This is the list of all your students that you have. The student that we're going to see, uh, Corinne Cosgrove, she's one of my team members, so she, she's okay with it. Yeah. Um, this is where you could actually search for a student as well if you, if you knew their student number. Now this is, this is proprietary to us. Um, I know I'm going to get some questions at the end that are going to ask, is this going to be available? Because I know someone was going to ask it. It was probably, yeah, I knew you would. Um, we are going to look at making it available but we have to strip it back because it is designed for our proprietary system. But I do, it is something that I want to do and make it um, as a local plugin and very configurable into a PWIC server. It's free. Bouncy stage. The student summary page is the first page you come into. Um, and this is where you're going to get a basic overall, overall information about the particular student. Um, you can get an average load time, which is a page. A lot of this will be actually quite irrelevant, but the tutor can go through and pick out what they need. Um, some interesting points is the last recorded login. Okay, um, I had a, when I first showed one of the tutors, she was saying me that um, oh no, he hasn't been online for two weeks. He keeps telling me that he hasn't been online and he's not been able to do it. When we went into the system, we were able to see that he was actually online on the Sunday. So she was her blood boiled, and this was apparently a very difficult student. Um, but you can see it went really, really quickly, so I'm sorry. Um, you can see where they've come from, um, the browser, and whether they're actually using a mobile device and which mobile device. Now that might not sound like much, but it's actually for us quite important to try and understand if they are coming from a mobile device. Everything that we've designed is responsive, so it does scale down quite nicely. Um, however, if they're having issues, we know that we can target that particular one by going in and having a look at it. Now, the page views is, um, or the way ours is structured is we don't have topics, etc. We have one unit per page, it's a course. Um, and they can go in and we can actually have a look at the pages that they've looked at on any particular day and how many times they've looked at it. So with a simple hover over, we could see that that particular date was a very busy date for them. Um, and then you can go over to details and actually have a look at the pages that they went to. So you get a little bit of a pattern and a little bit of an idea about where the student's actually gone. Um, 
this particular chart at the bottom tells us that Corinne was most active on a Friday. And that's because I let her work on her diploma on a Friday. You can see down the bottom she didn't do any work on a Saturday or Sunday and that doesn't surprise me at all. Um, you can click on the side and actually go and get more details about where the student actually went on that particular day. So you can start to generate a bit of a pattern about where, where the student's actually been. Um, and, and you can see whether they're starting to get stuck on anything as well. The download side of it comes back to resources as well. Um, of uh, student learner guides or um, any other type of clickable links that we can capture. So it'll send an event through to Peewick and we can capture that information. Um, it tells us the days that she's downloading and this doesn't necessarily mean that she's engaging in any studying, we just know that she's downloading it on these days. If we have a look at this one, uh, that's our code, student learner guide for one of our faculties that we have. The tutors know what the codes are so they know what documents the students have been downloading. This was never visible to any of the tutors before. We only allow them to go back 12 weeks. And that, again, is just a resource thing and, a, and a, um, um, a, a data thing. So it doesn't go back that far. We, are, we have been recording since January this year. We can get all that data if, if we need to, but we only let the tutors go back 12 weeks. I think it's the last video, actually. So we have a default set. We don't give the, student, the tutors a, a range, just one week, last week, two weeks, three weeks, four, eight, and 12. Um, but you can start to get a real pattern of how the student is actually working and studying. Um, in our student management system, we have, uh, it, it, it tells you what their best day is. So we would ask the student and say, what is your the best day to study? Given we're talking about adults here and they do have different ways and that thing called life gets in their way. Um, they can tell us that Thursday is their best day that they're studying on. And if you go into here, you'll go, well, no, hang on a minute, you're doing all your work on a Saturday. So we can assign you to an after-hours tutor that's going to look, at, look, look after you on the Saturday, where you're going to get more benefit out of it. Um, it's, when I put this in, it's uh, this um, presentation in oh, it was a couple of months ago now, I think we had to put them in. We're now working on another system where we're actually going to get and integrate an LRS into this as well. So we're looking at integrating Learning Locker through formative assessments. That's passing the email of the student into the LRS. My developer has been able to connect to the Learning Locker API and pull out data. So now we're going to mash that in with it as well, just so the, the tutor can actually see that there is learning happening, that the, the students are going into the formative assessments and they are actually doing something. So that's the next step we'll be taking with this. I've probably rushed through that really quickly, haven't I? You're right on time. So that's what we're doing. It will become available. I can't tell you when. Um, I, I'd love to have more developers, but I only have one at the moment, um, and he knows what he has to do. So um, that's it. That's a little plug-in that, that we've created. Any, any questions? That was really good, Julian. I was Thank just you. Um, wondering, so can you get the information for the whole class rather than individual No, students? at this point it's just per, on a per student basis. Okay. Are you looking to maybe go down that track? We don't have classes per se. We have okay. rolling enrolments, so we don't have any, um, we don't have semesters and we don't have um, terms or anything like that. You could end up getting three or four students a week. Um, and as a tutor, I was a tutor, I started as a tutor, 82 students and they were varying from the first, the first unit through to the last unit. So it was just up to you to manage that, but not by classes, no. Okay, all right, thanks. Although it does seem that if you had a class structure, you could assign the instructor of the class as the tutor to the students yes. in that class, and then they would effectively yeah. get that kind of, I mean, as, it wouldn't be long, overview, yeah. but. As long as you've got the data there, you can do pretty much anything with it, so. I think that was my question as well. Uh, I got the answer. Uh, because like uh, basically our classes is large, so yeah. for an example, 500 students. So for 500 students going through one by one, um, I think summary would be a very nice. Yeah. So these are the students probably uh, did so and so things. 
in last seven days kind of thing rather than going through one by one. Yeah, no, I, I understand that. And that's something that we would need to look at from a Moodle perspective and, and not a student management perspective because we all have different student management tools. Um, so yeah, that's something we'd need to look at, yeah. yeah. Um, does your organisation have guidelines for instructors as to how to use this information? Um, um, not as yet. It's very new. We've only actually had it running for about three or four months. Um, and I've done some training videos for it and done a short course on Moodle for it to get out. Um, but a lot of it, there's a big wow factor when they first see it. Um, and then they, they, a lot of it is try to be so simple that they can figure it out themselves. That was one of the big things. Um, two clicks, no buttons or minimal amount of buttons, no complicated information using the KISS method. Probably, yeah. probably more like, um, human information overview. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I've caught you out doing something in particular, or yeah. Well, that's something we've got. That's the mindset that we need to get them around. Yeah, I agree. We haven't done anything about it yet. Just an online course that I've done. So, um, yeah, virtual classroom sessions is probably what we're going to need to do, so they can interpret the data to know what to do with it. Yeah. Other questions or comments? Great cool. presentation. Thank you very Thank much you. for your time. We have a break. <laughs>